So now we're gonna get into shellfish and let's do this. We're on page 117. This is also a common question that I get as a chef content creator. Where do I get shellfish from? How do I know if it's good or what should I look for? We're gonna go over this in the most generic way possible, but trust me, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Let's start the conversation. So the next time I am doing a seafood video, I don't have to go in the comments. I can just refer back to this video, right? And that's the whole purpose of this. Let's get into the book. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a few things, market forms, store storage, quality indicators. And I think what's really important, just like we do with the fish, is the identification. The difference between a sea urchin and a clam. I know what that is. You may not know what that is. So it's important. Shellfish. Shellfish are aquatic animals protected by some sort of shell. Based on skeletal structure, they are segmented into four distinct categories. Univalves, single-shelled mollusks, bivalves, mollusks with just two shells joined by a hinge, crustaceans, jointed exterior skeletons or shells, and cephalopods, mollusks with tentacles attached directly to the head. Market forms. Shellfish are available fresh and frozen in various forms. Fresh shellfish are available live, shucked as tails, cocktail claws, and legs and claws. Frozen shellfish are also available shucked as tails, cocktail claws, legs, and claws. So if you ever hear somebody say shucking an oyster, that's what I'm gonna talk about right now. I've had a lot of people ask me, what is shucking? So here we go. Shucking is the removal of a mollusk's meat from the shell. The shucked market form is sold as meat only along with natural juices known as the liqueur. Mollusks such as oysters, clams, and mussels may be available shucked. Scallops are nearly always sold shucked, although there is a growing market for scallops that are live on the half shell with roe. Quality indicators. Listen up, everyone. When purchasing live shellfish, look for signs of movement. Lobsters and crabs should move about. Clams, mussels, and oysters should be tightly closed, but as they age, they will begin to open and should close when touched. Any shells that do not snap shut when tapped should be discarded. This means that the fish are dead. Molluscan shellfish should have sweet sea-like aroma. If you go to the grocery store and you see that the clams are closed tightly, this is a good sign. If they are all open, it doesn't mean that they're bad. Just touch the shell. If the shell closes, then it's good. Cause I've seen this happens a lot. Sometimes the clams are just like, you know, they just chill with their shells open. It depends on the situation, but I always do the tap. If they close, then they're good. Storage. Crabs, lobsters, and other live shellfish should be packed in seaweed or damp paper upon a delivery. If the lobster tank is not available, they can be stored directly in their shipping containers or in perforated pans at 39 degrees or below. Until they are to be prepared, do not allow lobsters or crabs to come in direct contact with fresh water as it will kill them. Clams, mussels, and oysters purchased in the shell should be stored in the bag which they were delivered or in perforated pans. They should be iced but should be stored at temperatures below 35 and 40. The bag should be closed tightly and lightly weighted to keep the shellfish from opening. If you're a professional chef, always keep those oyster tags. I was called out multiple times working in Las Vegas by not having the oyster tags. You need to have a folder, make sure they're clean and dry. The oyster tag lives with the oyster or the clam tag lives with the clam. And then after they've all been sold, make sure you keep those oyster tags, okay? Just keep it, right? Make sure you have a standard operating procedure where the cooks or the butcher or whoever, the fish station person, whoever has the dish on their station, make sure that they own it. It's not worth the negative points. For everybody at home, this is just a common rule in the restaurant world that you keep the oyster and shellfish tags, right? It shows when they were harvested, when they were packed, when they were shipped, all right? Very important. Now let's get into identification. Page 118, let's jump right in. So starting from the top, oysters, Belan oysters, cherry stone clams, Kumamoto oysters, my personal favorite, top neck clams, cockle clams, razor clams, Fanny Bay oysters, sea urchin, sea scallops, Malpec oysters, geoduck clam, green mussels, bay scallops, Florida oysters, blue mussels. Let's talk about the different types of oysters. Now there's East Coast and there's West Coast oysters. Some are small, some are big. The East Coast are usually big. The West Coast oysters have fruitier notes, but we can talk more about that if you want to. If not, I'm gonna move into the next section. I just think what's really important is if you go to an oyster bar, make sure they're shucking them like to order. You don't want the oysters that have been chilling forever. Now I will argue if I'm serving it for an amuse bouche, then it's okay to crack the oyster, but it needs to be opened within a few hours 
hours before you consume, right? If it's kind of like somebody's pre-shucking, you know, for the whole night, that's not really a good practice. Now, I will argue when I was a chef and I worked a raw bar station at the seafood bar at the Breakers Resort, we would sell so many oysters, it was ridiculous. Do you know what I used to do? I would just pop the hinge of the oyster, but leave it closed. And that way I could go really fast. But here's the thing, we never sacrifice quality, right? So I would never use the oysters from the day before. Or a good example is we would go through oysters so much that it was okay. But if you're in a restaurant that sells only a few dozen a night, then just crack them to order. It's so much better for your consumer. Moving on. There are two things that I wanna talk about because I think it's really important, but let's talk about the abalone. This is a common question I get. Being in California, being a chef in California, a lot of people aren't familiar with abalone. We use it a lot here. It is a gastropod mollusk found along the Pacific coast, also farm raised in California, Chile, and Japan. Farm raised averages three inches in diameter, encased inside round oval shell, available whole or in steaks, fresh or frozen. The best recipe I've ever had are two, one at Saison San Francisco, and then there was another one from a sushi restaurant. Absolutely delicious. Abalone is so underrated. It's so delicious. You have to try it. Sea urchin found in oceans around the world, often grouped with mollusks for marketing. Hard, dark purple shell covered with spines. The green variety is the most popular harvested for internal row uni, which ranges from bright to red orange to yellow in color. Firm texture that melts in your mouth. Sweet flavor considered a delicacy. Sea urchin is an acquired taste. So just be careful. The first time you try it, make sure it's from a reputable source. Go to a sushi restaurant. Don't be trying it off the streets, okay? What I really recommend is if you're ever in Santa Barbara or in Los Angeles, you know, that is a place to try uni, right? We get good uni up here in San Francisco, but what I'm saying is they do a really good job of South California. We're gonna skip a few pages and we're gonna go straight into the cephalopod. So page 122. The most common question I get is what's the difference between cuttlefish and octopus or calamari and octopus. We're gonna talk about that right now. Cephalopods 122, octopus, baby octopi, squid, squid ink in bowl. The squid ink is arguably one of the top things that are used in a restaurant to turn things black. And I gotta be honest, it's been kind of abused a little bit, but I really only use it if I truly think it fits, right? I don't just turn things black to turn things black. I remember in the early 2000s, we were making black pasta. It was just ridiculous, right? And I feel like it shouldn't be gimmicky. Make sure it fits properly, right? Here's a good example. I recently just posted a video of a black garlic butter that was made by a chef, Tom Bateman. This was a good application. It was just a small amount to help heighten the black color. You can't even taste it. It was perfect. But anyway, cuttlefish found in shallow coastal waters from Thailand, China, India and Spain and Portugal. Eight arms, two long narrow tentacles, light brown with zebra-like stripes, sweet, very tender when cooked properly, bright white flesh. Octopus found in shallow and deep waters of California and Alaska. Also Atlantic and Arctic regions from England's English Channel to Bermuda. Ranges in size from few ounces, which are the baby, to over 100 pounds. Soft boiled blood is blue, eyes on both sides of head, eight arms with two rows of suction cups on each. Mild flavor, tender texture when cooked properly. Squid and calamari. Invertebrae found along the east and west coast. Changes color of skin for protection. Ink used to confuse predator. Average size, seven inches in length. Available fresh, cleaned in rings, tubes, frozen, slightly firm texture when cooked properly. Mild, sweet flavor. Things like the octopus and the cuttlefish need to be braised, need to be cooked for a long time. What I recommend is make sure you follow a recipe that is proper, okay? I'm gonna be honest, sous vide octopus is probably my favorite. Sous vide and then boom, on the grill, it's absolutely amazing. I prefer this method because you get the whole octopus, right? When you boil it and it's just rolling, boiling, or if it's simmering, you know, there's so much liquid, you can't really get all the flavor you want into that octopus. So sous vide is my favorite. Maybe I'll leave a recipe down if I get enough requests. We are going to wrap up with the crustacean shellfish. I absolutely love crabs, I love shrimp, and this is gonna be a fun section for me, but it's very common. So that's why I wanna talk about it and identifying what is what. One Page 124, let's get into it. King crab, this is the creme de la creme, okay, everyone? I love king crab. If it wasn't so expensive, I'd be eating it every night, seriously. Also, take in consideration, these things are pests, right? It's good to remove them from the ocean. They don't have a natural predator. It's a sustainable thing to eat. They're just very expensive. Okay. Next, we're gonna go to Dungeness crab. Very common here in California and also Oregon. This is a really delicious crab. It is highly perishable though. One to three days, you gotta eat it or else guess what? If it's not alive, it just goes downhill bad. Next, we're gonna go to Jonah crab, one of my favorites. Snow crab claws, American lobster, 
freshwater shrimp, pink shrimp head on, white shrimp head off, tiger shrimp head off. Another couple honorable mentions that I wanna talk about that I think are kind of important are the soft shell crab. Soft shell crab is a blue crab that sheds its shell in harvested when it's still soft. In season from April to mid-September, peak in June and early July. After cleaning, the entire crab may be eaten. The difference between blue crab and soft shell crab is the same thing. It's just when the crab has shed its shell and it's it's in a stage of its life. So delicious. I love soft shell crabs when they're in the height of season. I love the jumbo ones. They're amazing. Hopefully I'll be able to do a recipe with them. Also, another one I wanted to mention, the rock shrimp. Rock shrimp are very popular. So rock shrimp are found from the southeastern United States to the Gulf of Mexico, sold peeled and by the count per pound. Flavor and texture more like crawfish than other shrimp. This is what you make popcorn shrimp with, but I absolutely love these. You know, their rock shrimp are so delicious. Also, another honorable mention is crayfish. Crayfish are awesome. You don't get that much yield, but they're good. They're, they're tasty. They're only available for a short period of time. Now that you've had a basic idea of what it is, please feel free to do your research. If you wanna go more into depth in any of these categories, please let me know below. I could probably answer your question within the comment section. Please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Share this whole series with somebody that needs to see it. I'll see y'all next week.